For this video, I'm going to show you why you should have the late compensation always on when mixing. That is the setup that will go here under setup, sorry, options, delay compensation. Options, delay compensation should be on. And as you can tell right after I turn it on, um, these colors come to life or these numbers come to life. And it's telling us a couple of things. The first one is how much delay there are on that track. And I'm going to come to these tracks that I actually set up for this video over here. On the track on the left, it's saying that there's delay of zero. Why? Because the only plugin that we have there is the trim. And the trim doesn't induce any delay. Therefore, it's zero. But that track is being compensated by 4,096 samples. Why so? Because there is one track which happens to be the one next to it, in this case, that is in orange. First of all, when you have a track in orange, means that that track is the one that has the most latency or delay on the whole session. And that's okay. There, there's no other problem with that. When you have a problem is if you see any track on red, because that means that the track will be exceeding the maximum delay compensation that there is. So let's get back to basics. Every plugin or most plugins will have some processing time. There are some like the trim or the basic Pro Tools EQ. Let's open up just because I have here the Fat Filter 3 that has they have no latency. Let me just move it. Sorry. And again, it's giving us no latency, although I have it. And the same would apply with uh, so many plugins, and that's part of the greatness is that they apply. They, they add no latency to it. But there are some others like the Maxim that will take a lot of processing to that. So 4096 because I added many of them just for teaching purposes. And this is the thing. If I put these two tracks and I would love you to listen to this example on uh, headphones or on um, two speakers so that it's notorious the difference. If I play the two of them it will feel like it's coming from the dead center while delay compensation is on. What delay compensation is doing is, is doing here is that it's saying to all the tracks, hey, listen, I'm going to wait for this track to play to allow you to play. That's why it's compensating for 4,096. If you think about uh, of a group of people, it's going to say, hey, no one can finish this race until the very last one of your team shows up. So it's keeping them all in a very nice um, time restriction so that there's no delays affecting one track or the other one. Now, I'm going to deactivate the um, delay compensation. And one more time, I'm going to ask you to listen to this example. And now we're going to hear that the, the track on the right will be delayed to the track on the left. That's very notorious. Why so? Because we're not compensating for the delay that these tracks are doing. The sound should be the same. Notice that these tracks are on bypass, but on bypass, the tracks are still being processed. So there's still the signal is going through it, although we don't hear any change in the sound, but that's how dramatic the delay compensation it is. Many times it would be a couple of milli of samples or milliseconds and not as drastic as this example. And, uh, that's why I'm doing this one, so that is notorious for you guys to do that. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come here and then go under options and enable delay compensation. You always wanna mix with delay compensation on so that you don't have these problems where things will get off sync or off tempo and it will sound very weird. I hope this helps. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.